Hey guys, I'm Chris Buck, and a very warm welcome to Friday Fratworks. And this week we're taking a look at a bit of a contradiction in terms, actually. It's my live rig for 2020. <laughs> So for obvious reasons, 2020 hasn't exactly been a year that's necessitated the use of a live rig. It's actually been about nine and a half months since I did my last show. But I'm excited to say that tomorrow, Saturday the 12th of December, albeit virtual, I actually have a gig. It's a Buck and Evans live stream show. It's ticketed, should you fancy watch it. I'll stick all the relevant details down in the description box. But suffice to say, I couldn't possibly be more excited to actually get back in a room with my mates and just make some noise. So at rehearsal yesterday, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to arrive a little bit in advance of the band, set everything of mine up that I was going to be using for the gig, film the process, talk you guys through exactly what is going on in my live rig of 2020, one of about three gigs I will have done this year, show you the process, and ultimately just want a bit of an excuse to make some unholy levels of noise, which is precisely what I did. So without further ado, let's take a look what's going on. So here we are in a rather disheveled, um, albeit tastefully lit guitar corner, which in the absence of John Bollinger, Jason Shadrick, or unfortunately Rebecca Dirks, I'm gonna run you down through my own rig to uh, perilously avoid any possibly copyrighted terms. First and foremost, of course the cable, the most important part of the rig, without which there would be no sound. Secondly, we have uh, a relatively unchanged pedal board since the Friday Fretworks I did on it pretty recently actually, with the sole exception of, drum roll please, now that right there, is this new amazing technology, which I don't think anyone's heard of, or maybe just me, called MIDI, which, um, unsurprisingly, was a very common suggestion I had in that Friday Fretworks, where I talked about this pedal board, was to sort my proverbial out and finally get the grips with, uh, with MIDI, purely to do this. Now that, considering the sort of capabilities of MIDI, um, is very simple, no doubt, but honestly, it has blown my mind. So a massive thank you to the guys at the gig rig for talking me through that, Change my world and just means I don't have to bend down either mid-song or in between songs to change through my presets on the HX stop. Total game changer. The only thing I do need to sort out is the shape of that lead. Being a right angle end and pointing up in the air kind of means I have to unplug it every time it goes back in the flight case. Moving over to the amps. Now, I don't know whether that dark mark on the top right-hand corner of the Zilla cab is bugging you as much as it is bugging me. I don't know where that's come from. Um, so I have to sort that out later, but obviously two Zilla cabs, both 1x12s. On the right hand side we have a EV12L, arguably my favourite speaker of all time, and on the left hand side we have a Celestian Redback. Running through the EV12L we of course have the Fuchs Clean Machine. Now I've spoken about this amp on many an occasion, just a gorgeous sounding clean platform, or clean machine if you will, um, which is set pretty kind of straight ahead really, everything's nearly at 
nearly at noon, save for the accent, which is one of those magic controls, which I don't really understand what it does, but it seems to sound better the more you turn it up. As I said, on the left-hand side, um, we have the Celestian Redback, a Zilla 1x12. Apologies to any sound engineers wondering what the hell I've done with that SM57. As long as it makes a noise when it goes into my interface, then I'm a happy boy. Of course, with the Victory V140 running through it. Um, again, one of my favorite amps. Does that kind of Fender blackface kind of top end sparkle thing very, very nicely, which in conjunction with the Fuchs Clean Machine, which is a bit more of a kind of chesty mid-range punch, makes for a really cool pairing. It's worth mentioning both of these amps are running simultaneously, constantly. There's not wet, dry. There's not one dirty, one clean or anything like that. These are just both constantly on. It's a bit of a luxury I do appreciate for bigger gigs. It's not essential by any stretch, but it's just a cool little... Uh, Cool little thing to have when I can have the space on stage. Atop the V140, confusingly, with the Fuchs Clean Machine running through it, so I don't know why it's placed there, we have the Oxbox from Universal Audio. That is handling the Clean Machine, as I said, with the SM57 then in front of the Celestian Redback, handling the V140, all of which is running into a Scarlett 2i2 interface, which is running into Logic Pro on my MacBook. Boring stuff out of the way. Last but definitely not least, we have the guitar rack. Now on the left hand side is a guitar you heard at the start of the video. Of course, my new Gibson SG61 reissue. I was bitten by the uh, the SG bug recently after that Friday Frightworks I did on it. Um, I came across this one on Facebook Marketplace. It's from 2009 and actually belonged to a friend of mine prior who'd done some incredible upgrades. We've got a set of Sunbear PAF pickups in it, a Faber bridge and tailpiece, upgraded plastics um, from Cream Tone, I do believe. So we've got the kind of Les Paul thing on the headstock and upgraded pots and caps. Just a really cool, solid SG that um, I've re really been enjoying playing, actually. Moving on, we have the American Pro 2 Telecaster in Mystic Surf Green. Of course, you will have seen this in a recent Friday Fright Works if you watched the Maple vs. Rosewood shootout that I did. Again, just a great kind of workman-like telly. I'm aware that almost sounds like an insult, but for a Telecaster, that's the kind of best praise I could ever heap upon one, really. <laughs> we have my custom Yamaha Revstar, the gold top. Now for everyone bugging me every time this appears as to whether it's ever likely to be a signature model, hold tight, I may have some news for you relatively soon. Currently has a set of Lola P90s in it, but they may be coming out, they, in fairness, they sound very good, but I think they'll be coming out relatively soon. I've managed to get hold of a set of original 50s P90s that unfortunately I can't keep, but they're a great barometer for maybe kind of doing a bit of a shootout, trying to find the best or the most accurate sounding 50 spec P90s. I think that is as good as any um, kind of guitar to try that process in. So uh, excited to get that going. Again, just a great, great sounding guitar, beautifully made by the guys at the Yamaha Custom Shop in Los Angeles. Sounds a little bit like this. Thank you. 
Next up, we have my Highway 1 Strat from 2004, I do believe. Um, it's been my number one guitar for a very long time now. Just a fantastic sounding guitar that, um, in conjunction with the signature Radio Shop pickups that I have in it, I'm particularly fond of. As I said, it's been my number one for a good while now, but um, be interesting to see whether that's superseded by the, uh, the little red number lurking next to it. Either way, just a great sounding Strat that I can't ever see not being in my guitar rack. And of course, last but not least, the, uh, the 62 Strat that, again, if you're a frequent viewer of Friday Fretworks, you may well be familiar with. It's not only a video on this, but an entire seven part, I do believe, series dedicated to its restoration. Um, it's an interesting story behind it, should you want to check that out. But the main thing is, is that I'm very excited to get it back out on the road, probably for the first time in, I guess, at least 40, maybe even 50 years. It's been hidden away from, uh, from Pry and Ice for quite a while now. So I'm excited to um, finally get it on a stage and then hopefully next year actually put it through its paces in front of some people as well. So uh, that is the guitar rack. And then the last thing worth mentioning, Ernie Ball Mega Slinkies across the boards. If not, we have regular Slinkies, which are on the 62. Seven and a quarter radius just makes it a little bit easier to get a grips of 10s. And of course, uh, Grolsch bottle tops to make sure the guitars don't fall off me. And there you have it. I'm going to play you out now with the live clip of that 62 Strat that I was just talking about. As I said earlier, all the relevant links for the Buck and Emmons live stream tomorrow, Saturday the 12th of December, are down in the description box below. Should you fancy checking it out, it's going to be a lot of fun. As ever, though, thank you very, very much for watching. You're watching Friday Fretworks. I'm Chris Buck. Please subscribe, hit the bell icon if you haven't already. It really does help. And I shall see you next week for another episode. Cheers, guys. Take care, and I shall see you soon.